Hello everyone, this is Mike. Welcome to my channel, Mike the Tech Savvy. In front of me I have a standard stock Samsung Galaxy S20 and today I will be showing you how to route it. It's pretty important to note that this method works on all Exynos based S20s. So S20, S20 Plus and S20 Ultra and on the 5G versions as well. Please do not try it if you have a Snapdragon based Samsung Galaxy S20, it will definitely not work. Probably it's needless to say, but it does void the warranty. Any kind of software modification of this kind does void the warranty and there is a risk involved. In order to minimize it as much as possible, please make sure you follow the steps that I will be showing you right now. I chose to have a fully standard S20 device so I can show you the exact steps in order to reduce the possibility of boot loops. I know probably a lot of you have bought this device and were looking for a method to root it. And given that these days we do have a lot of time to spend in the house, I hope you're staying indoors as much as possible. I suppose it's a pretty important video you will definitely have the freedom to do whatever you wish with your device after routing it. You have a couple of requirements. Of course, you'll need a Windows PC and you will need 7-zip, Odin, the latest Magisk Manager Canary APK and a stock Samsung firmware downloaded. You can use either Samfirm or a website to get this. Just make sure you get the correct one for your model number. In my case, the S20 4G international version has the model number SMG980F. I will link all of these in the video description below. Now, let's go forward with the main steps. These are not the complete steps, but it's a, let's say a quick summary. We do have here a fully stock Samsung Galaxy S20. You can see that the NOx is not triggered. This trigger usually voids the warranty so take note that this will definitely happen if you use this method or well any other method to root your device this is my phone model it's the international version of the samsung galaxy s20 4g version the first thing we need to do is to unlock the bootloader and in order to do that we need to go into settings about phone software information and now tap the build number five times until you turn on the developer mode go back into settings you have developer options here and tick the OEM unlocking box just be aware of the fact that when you unlock the bootloader the device will be wiped so make sure you have a backup or you make a backup beforehand otherwise you will lose all the data on your device and this was the first step now we need to turn off the device, wait for it to vibrate. Now you'll have to be ready with a powered USB Type-C cable. I already connected it to the PC. Here you can already press the key combo for download mode, volume down and volume up. Keep them pressed and insert the USB Type-C cable. Here you go. This is the download mode. As you can see, we do have a device unlock mode, volume up long press. Once again, as you can see right here, this operation deletes all personal data, so performs a factory data reset. Make sure you make a backup beforehand. Now you will receive this warning message because the bootloader is unlocked and, well, it's standard procedure for Android devices. Now the phone will reset and will boot up normally. After the phone has booted up, we can simply skip through the setup wizard, but this is a mandatory step. We need to perform it and we're done. The phone is now formatted and with the unlock bootloader, we can now put the device aside and take a look at the next steps. We now need to download on the PC the latest Magisk Manager Canary APK. We also need to have the latest stock Samsung firmware 
on our Windows machine. As you can see, I have them here. This is the latest Magisk Manager APK. This is the stock Samsung Galaxy S20 firmware. And this is Odin. The next step would be to extract this AP file from here, which is quite simply done like this. Extract to folder. It shouldn't take that much time, only a few seconds. Once it's done, open the folder. And from here, we need the boot image which should be in this format, so boot.image.lz4. We need to tar up this file with 7-zip, so just right-click it, 7-zip, add to archive, and in the archive format, we need to choose tar, and type in OK. We have it here, and now we need to transfer to our device this tar boot image and the latest Magisk Manager APK. Once that's done, go back to the mobile phone and go to files, should be here in Samsung. Um, here we need to install Magisk Manager. This is the latest Canary version. You also need to connect to the internet. Now go to install, allow, select the boot image that you just extracted from the stock firmware. And here you go. Now you have a third file here, a boot image which was patched with Magisk. Of course, it's a tar file, so this means that we have to flash it in Odin. But from now on, the procedure is quite simple. First of all, you need to copy this patched tar file back to the PC and once you've done that you need to turn off the device uh, they changed this and I'm too used to DS10 so power off the device and get it ready for download mode of course make sure on the PC you have all the necessary Samsung drivers installed in order for Odin to work properly press the key combo which is volume up and volume down at the same time. Insert the cable. You can see that the patched Magix file is already here on my PC. Now you can simply open Odin with admin rights. There you go. And we need to place this patched tar file into the AP slot. You can go into options and untick the auto reboot button. This is because after we flash this, we need to press the recovery key combination and now simply press start. It should flash right away and that's it. And now we move back to the phone. We can remove the cable. We are done and we can now restart the device into recovery mode. How you do that? We use volume down the side key first of all to restart it and immediately we press volume up when the device turns off I keep pressing volume up for the device to go into recovery mode and once we see the Samsung logo we can let it off once we're here into recovery mode to we'll perform a factory reset you can navigate very easily here through the volume keys wipe data factory reset now press the power button factory data reset and yes there you go you have everything confirmed here and now you can simply reboot into system and now we are booted up configure it normally once you've finished going through the setup wizard so adding your Google account and everything you need to copy the Magisk Manager APK once again into one of the folders Open my files, you will see it here. Install it once again. Now you will need to tap yes. And it will automatically reboot. You will now get this error message as well because the phone detected that the boot image is not the stock one. Okay, now open Magis Manager. Where are you? Here. And it's all good. Let's just test it out with an application 
Let's install phone name for Samsung, which is probably one of the most useful pieces of software you can install on a Samsung device. It shows you a lot of things. Once the application has installed, you can just open it and it will request you a super user access. Just grant it and you will see some really nice information here. You can see exactly how many times the charger has been connected to the phone and how many cycles does the battery have, which is pretty, pretty interesting. In the past, I know it showed you the number of times you've connected the headphone jack, but of course, this device doesn't feature a headphone jack anymore, so it makes no sense to show that. Of course, you can use whatever app you want to check the root access. If you want to reboot your device, let me just... Okay, much, much better now. <laughs> okay, if you want to restart your device, you can simply, well, restart it from here or power off and turn it on. You do not need to press any key combination in order to have the root access. I know I've written it here, the fourth point, but I will delete it right now. You do not need to press any key combination to boot into the correct rooted system. Let me just give you a quick demo now. And there you go, Magisk is installed. So I guess that's it. One more word of notice. If you want to update your device right now to the next security patch level or whatever, the procedure is a bit different. You cannot simply go into settings, software update, and that's it. Uh, naturally, what you need to do is to download the new firmware via Odin, extract the stock boot image, patch it via Magisk Manager, just like you did before, install, allow, and select and patch a file here, bring it back from the phone to the PC, and now boot into download mode, flash the stock firmware, so basically exactly what you downloaded from the website or from Samfirm, flash it in download mode on this device with with auto reboot unticked. Of course, make sure you flash the home CSC and not the CSC file, otherwise you would wipe your device. Once the phone has been flashed, you need to once again reboot into download mode with the usual key combo. If you somehow didn't catch it, you can simply press the power and volume down and the device will reboot automatically and you can try again. Once you're in download mode again, you can simply flash the boot image that you previously patched in Magisk Manager and just reboot normally the device. The method isn't that complicated, you just need to be careful when doing it. You no longer have to reboot into recovery to be able to boot in a rooted system. I've listed all the files here in the video description. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. This was the video for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please press the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more similar videos in the future, also press the subscribe button, which will be displayed right here in the bottom left part. This was Mike the Tech Savvy. I wish you a great day. Bye.